Well, good afternoon. And uh, let me start by saying in a couple of weeks, there's going to be the biggest shake-up in payroll for 70 years, according to HMRC. It's going to be a change from being a remote bureaucracy that you can wrestle with once a year to being a body that you report to every month. You can forget the days of doing everything on paper and having it all spread out on the living room floor. This new system requires a computer and no delay in sending what you owe. Dentists tend to leave everything until the last minute before they take notice of any new system, which is why we have delayed this webinar until now. We are actually already in the last month under the old system. And I'm delighted that Ballyark is going to walk us through what will inevitably be a stressful transition for some. So, Bally, over to you. Uh, welcome to this uh, webinar on real-time information. I think Derek has pretty well covered all of the points that I was going to uh, uh, go to discuss. But uh, I, actually, when I first uh, uh, came across this new new RTI system, I thought, well, it should be pretty straightforward, not too difficult. Uh, the payroll department will be able to cope with that. Um, but uh, the more and more I got into it, uh, the more I found actually this could be quite an interesting transition. So, uh, so hopefully uh, we'll, we'll have a little speedy uh, tour around uh, the, the new system that's, that's coming through uh, starting from next month. Just a quick uh, uh, background on myself. My name is Bally Yark. I'm a chartered accountant and chartered tax advisor. I've been advising small and medium-sized uh, businesses since 1990. I'm the practice principal at Accountants for Dentists. And my specialist area is uh, chartered, uh, as a chartered tax advisor, uh, is within dentistry, uh, advising dentists, associates, uh, hygienists, and uh, generally um, anybody uh, involved in the, the dentistry field. So what are we going to be looking at this afternoon? Uh, what's on the agenda is we'll, we'll be looking at the current system of PAYE, uh, just a brief uh, wave goodbye to uh, uh, the old system. Most of the session will be concentrating on uh, the new RTI system, how we think it will impact on your practice, uh, the obvious question of what happens if we get it wrong, um, which I'm sure a few uh, practices will be doing. and. Uh, We'll close off with any questions that uh, you may have at the end. So, looking at the current system of PAYE, well, that, that's been around since uh, 1944, uh, which makes it uh, 69 years old. So that's uh, pretty pretty much in line with the, the, the government's drive to increase the retirement age. Uh, it's quite a quite a, a good age to be retiring the old system there. Um, as as many of you know. The, uh, the system at the moment it, uh, only requires employers to send one return uh, for payroll uh, into HMRC uh, once a year, and that uh, includes the P35 and the P14. These are a summary of the payments that have been made to uh, employees during the year. There are one or two other returns, uh, things like P11Ds, which uh, summarize any benefits in kind that uh, employees have received during the year, uh, but the main ones. Uh, for the year end are the P35 and the P14. Now, because they only get submitted to HMRC uh, once a year, um, the information uh, available to the tax office is normally uh, about a year out of date. So, um, uh, you know, if, if uh, they, they are uh, looking or checking to see whether the right deductions are being made, sometimes it's, it's well, more often than not, it's, it's too late because there's only one return going in. Uh, per annum. Also, it's generally felt that uh, the current system, whilst we've got online filing of year-end returns, didn't really meet the needs of the 21st century. So RTI really is uh, quite a big upheaval uh, for the operation of PAYE. There's also been a number of issues with the current system. I mean, in the past, uh, if you didn't send a check into HMRC once a month, um, well, they never really chased you for it. And uh, a lot of uh, employers out there had wised up to the fact that you could actually use HMRC as a bit of an overdraft facility. So uh, uh, 
when it, when it came to doing the year-end return, if there was a bit of a shortfall on their PAYE payments, then, um, then uh, uh, you'd send a, a balancing check-in at the end of each year. And more, more often than not, HMRC wouldn't really chase uh, for any payments in year because they didn't know they needed to be made in year. Um, so without HMRC chasing, employers generally taking advantage of the fact that they could use HMRC as a bank, uh, they were losing out on a lot of payments. Uh, there was also a lot of, uh, a lot of fraud um, involved in the PAYE arena, uh, where uh, instances where you've got uh, employees uh, who are having PAYE national insurance deducted from their wages, uh, but not being paid over to uh, or notified to HMRC. So uh, we're hoping that uh, the, the, the new RTI system will allow uh, fraud to be tracked and uh, uh, picked up and uh, prevented uh, on a more timely basis. But again, we'll see whether the uh, RTI system will uh, uh, lead to a big, bigger reduction in, in the uh, amount of fraud out there. There's also uh, a much higher administration burden for uh, HMRC, if you can imagine. You're probably all familiar with the current system of P45s and P46s that need to be signed in and sent off to uh, HMRC. They're only recently brought online, but if you can imagine the amount of paperwork that uh, uh, is being collated over the years, it can be quite burdensome. So again, more reason to bring the system onto a more modern footing using modern technology. So, RTI, the new system, well, does it start on April the 13th? Well, yes, it does. And uh, for some employers, it's actually been in place for this current tax year that we're in at the moment. They've uh, had a number of employers that, are, that have been uh, running RTI on a pilot basis just to test the system. And, and those employers uh, have been across the board, ranging from small, uh, to small employers to, uh, to some of the larger outfits. Uh, but the full switch uh, to RTI across the UK is uh, is going to start next month. Um, now, um, although, although the submission uh, of information will be the biggest change, uh, the actual underlying system of, of collecting and calculating PAY and national insurance, uh, that's not really going to change. That's, that's going to stay uh, as it is. So the, the, the big change is really on, on the way employers will be interfacing with HMRC. We need to uh, be reporting tax, national insurance and all the other, any other deductions that are made on or before the actual payment of payroll rather than uh, getting this information reported once a year at the year end. Um, what HMRC are hoping this will do is, is that uh, it should, should make sure that uh, the right PAYE and national insurance deductions are being made on a real-time basis. Uh, rather than, again, having to wait until the end of the tax year uh, and then chasing employers or employees for any under and overpayments of PAYE national insurance. <coughs> why, oh, why RTI? Well, why are they bringing in RTI? Again, number of reasons that, uh, that, are, that are included in uh, one of the HMRC press releases. It's uh, really to, to make sure that uh, employees' circumstances are, are returned to HMRC on a more timely basis rather than once a year. The aim also is to, is to make the process a lot simpler and less burdensome, and we'll, we'll, we'll see uh, what, what that brings when uh, we, we look at the information that we're going to be submitting uh, under RTI should also make uh, PAYE more accurate for individuals, again, preventing the need for chasing for payments and repayments after the end of the tax year. Any late payers? Well, HMRC will, won't be used as a bank anymore because they'll know uh, how much PAYE national insurance is due every month rather than having to wait until the year end. So it should allow HMRC to, to chase uh, late payers on a more timely basis, and uh, it, 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 the, the aim is also to, to make sure that uh, there's, there's less errors in areas such as tax credits, 
uh, at any areas where this this fraud taking place. Uh, will RTI apply to all employers? Well, yes, it will. Uh, there's only a handful of um, uh, employer kind of PAYE schemes that won't have to operate PAYE on a real-time basis, and these these relate to offshore protocols and and tax award schemes, which you, you, you rarely see in practice. We'll be faced with lots of new abbreviations from April, and uh, I've just listed the main ones out for you, so you can uh, become a little bit familiar uh, with these, so when people uh, or your accountants or HMRC start talking about FPSs and EASs and NVRs, uh, you'll have a, a fairly good idea as to what, what they all mean. Now, starting at the top, FPS is the full payment submission. So when an employee's paid, um, your payroll department will hit the FPS button and uh, the uh, information uh, relating to the PAYE national insurance, the employees, national insurance details, address, etc., etc. All that will be transmitted um, to HMRC on a real-time basis. So every time an employee is paid, either on the date that they're being paid or, or, the, or before they're being paid, we'll need to submit uh, an FPS. Where there's changes in the amount of uh, PAYE or national insurance that we we're, we're paying, for instance, you know, we may need to make advance payments to, to cover any statutory payments, or you know, there may be some changes to the statutory sick pay or statutory maternity pay. So, uh, anything that's being paid outside of a, a, a normal payroll run, uh, we would then use what's called an employer payment summary. Um, and also, if there aren't any employees being paid, we, we need to submit an employer payment summary. Because um, if we don't, then HMRC will automatically assume that the employees left, uh, in which case they assume that the P45 has been raised and they'll be removed from your payroll. So, uh, so it's very important to make sure that either an FPS or an EPS is submitted on a timely basis. Um, uh, the next one down is an employer alignment submission. Uh, one of the key things that uh, needs to be done as part of RTI is to make sure that all of the details are HMRC hold on their database is in line with the information that's being provided by the employers. Now, uh, the EAS really aimed at some of the larger employers or those with employers that are running two payroll systems. Uh, you'll find that on your for, for the remainder of the employers across the UK, the first FPS, the first full payment submission in April, will be used. Uh, as a as a kind of an employer alignment submission, so that that first FPS will be used to check all of the data that uh, employers hold, and they'll be comparing that with the information that HMRC holds. The other uh, abbreviations that you may well see is a EYU. Hopefully, you shouldn't have to be using one of these. This is where you've made a mistake on a previous FPS, uh, but you haven't spotted it until after the end of the tax year or certainly after the 19th of April following the tax year, uh, in which case uh, you're allowed to uh, submit uh, amendments using an earlier year update, the EYU. And uh, the, 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 another new abbreviation on the block is the NVR, the Number Verification Request. This is where, uh, if you haven't got a national insurance number for one of your employees, then uh, you can obtain one using the NVR, Number Verification Request. So, so what kind of things are we uh, going to be faced with? Well, as mentioned earlier, every time that we make a payment to an employee, um, a submission will have to be made real time uh, to HMRC. Um, uh, the, the normal uh, mechanism for doing that will be a full payment submission, the FPS. Uh, system and again we'll be looking at that in a bit more detail later on in this webinar. Uh, you will need to have uh, payroll software for the online submissions. Um, either you'll 
need to buy an off-the-shelf uh, piece of payroll software that, that uh, is, is lined up to use RTI or alternatively there is a, a, a simple payroll tool on the HMRC website that you, that you can use also, that's for some of the smaller employers. It's going to be a change in the uh, forms and uh, that, that have been used in the past. Uh, we've got the P14s and the P35s. These are the old employer year-end returns. Well, those uh, we can wave goodbye to those. Uh, no longer will employers need to do these uh, year-end returns called the P14s, P35s. Again, FPS uh, will collect all of that data real time and submit. Uh, to HMRC where, whenever uh, a payment is made. P45, hopefully we shouldn't be seeing many of those um, in the past and certainly we won't be seeing any of those going forward. Again, any information for leavers will form part of the um, uh, full payment submission uh, return which is made whenever uh, employees um, are paid. Again, P46 uh, this is for usually it's this forms completed when we have a new starter uh, joining uh, employment uh, and again no need for you won't see any p46s again they'll all be included online on the fps return uh, the other one is a p38s which is uh, what uh, students uh, tend to have when they're um, doing summer jobs or working over Easter holidays or whatever. Um, again, those are scrapped from April, and again, uh, students will be uh, run via the, the payroll uh, as normal alongside all, all the other employees. Um, in the past, if, if you weren't able, if you, if you didn't have an employee's national insurance number, you would uh, submit a CA6855 to uh, uh, trace a national insurance number for an employee. Well, again, this is where the NVR kicks in. Uh, you'd make the request online using a number verification request. Uh, some of the old uh, forms will stay uh, with us. That's the P60s. That's uh, the, the uh, certificate of earnings for employees, which you need to issue to employees at the end of each year. And uh, the only other um, uh, forms that you will still need to issue are the P11Ds and P9Ds, those are where uh, so your employees have got uh, benefits in kind. So why are we bringing out RTI? Well, you may or may not be aware there's uh, a whole new system and the upheaval of the way um, some of the uh, uh, tax credit system is going to be operating and that's going to kick in with effect from October 2013 and the idea is that there'll, there'll only be one payment for uh, people who are on low incomes or out of work. Um, so all of these job seeker allowance, income support, tax credits, housing benefits, those are all going to be scrapped and replaced with a universal credit. So the idea is that whilst the um, universal credit system is running in the background uh, by the Department of Work and Pensions, the RTI system will also be feeding employees income details and universal credits can then be adjusted upwards or downwards depending on the individual's circumstances. So, so, so that's really one of the uh, driving forces as well for bringing in RTI. So, as a practice, well, we're not far away. It's uh, almost in the middle of March, and uh, the first um, FPS needs to be submitted. If you're if you're operating weekly um, payroll, it's going to be probably the first or second week of April 2013. So, the kind of things that you need to be doing now um, is making sh is, is is tracking through the, all of your employees' data and, and making sure that you've got their accurate names, you can't be using nicknames, um, we need to check the dates of birth, make sure we've got the national insurance number using, and I put question mark there because uh, I was going to use this as a little quiz for you, but you should know hopefully by now that you'll be using an NVR uh, national 
uh, a number verification request if you haven't got a national insurance number. Um, so if you haven't got a uh, national insurance number, you'd be submitting an NDR uh, to obtain that. And also, um, you'd need to check their employees' addresses as well to make sure that you have got the right address. Basically, if uh, you don't have an employee's national insurance number, then uh, HM, the RTI system will automatically use their employee's full postal address, um, which, will, which will then go to RTI. And if, if um, the, the full postal address doesn't match up with the information that HMRC holds, then the whole of your return will get bounced back to you and it would treat, be treated as, as a, a, an in, unsubmitted return. And uh, we'll, talk, we'll be covering uh, the penalties situation uh, that, that will be kicking in for late returns and incorrect returns uh, later in the webinar. So the first FPS, as I said, that's uh, going to be the first payroll run for the 2013-14 tax year. Uh, the first one will be treated as an alignment. It's, it's an opportunity for you as an employer as well as HMRC to make sure that the correct uh, information is being held employees. Now, you, you, won't you won't just include the employees that are getting paid in that first uh, payroll run. You need to include all of the employees uh, that have been uh, on your payroll within that month. So anybody that's been paid, anybody that's left since the 6th of April, between 6th of April and the date of your first um, uh, FPS will need to be included. Any, pay, any employees that haven't been paid uh, in that first period, they will still need to be included on the first FPS. Remember, um, HMRC are going to be using this first FPS as, a, as, a, as a, a, an exercise to align the information that they hold uh, with the information that you hold. Also, if, if you have any employees that have left in the previous tax year for whom you haven't yet issued, the P45, well, they need to be included as well and um, uh, shown as, uh, as leaving in that first period. So, what do you need to do? Well, you need to make sure that your, or, I mean, most um, practices um, use their accountants or another external payroll, payroll bureau to, uh, to process payroll, but um, make sure that either your or your payroll provider software is, is RTI compliant. Uh, I would hope that by now everybody's is. Um, check that um, you or your payroll provider are all registered for PAYE online. That really needs to be done now before uh, um, we get to uh, April 13. You may also need to update and check some of your internal procedures and systems to make sure that you're capturing all of the information required for uh, a correct um, FPS submission to be made. Uh, the kind of things that you're going to need to start recording, uh, which sometimes you may not have done before because some, some employees are just on a fixed uh, weekly or monthly or fortnightly wage, uh, but you, need to, you will need to mark off the uh, category of hours uh, that they work. So if they're working, whether they're working less than 16 hours, if they're working between 16 to 30 hours, or if they're working more than 30 hours. And uh, that's actually a mandatory field that's going to need to be uh, completed. Uh, and the reason uh, for, for completing that is, is uh, for the purposes of tax credits. Uh, so, that, so HMRC and the Department of Work and Pensions will, will be able to calculate the right uh, bandings for tax credits. Um, also, where you've got new starters, um, again, decide whether it's their first job since the 6th of April, um, whether they've got uh, another job and they receive uh, other income, or income E, or a slight typo there. Um, where you have got irregular payments um, or employees that haven't been paid for a particular month for whatever reason, there is a, a tick box um, within the RTI system where you, you have to mark them as being a, an irregular payment um, because if you, if you don't pay an employee in a particular period and they're not marked as an irregular payment, then 
HMRC would automatically assume that they've left, um, and uh, internally HMRC will then kickstart a, a P45 process internally. So, so that's something that's quite important. Um, all employees will need to be included, uh, including the ones that are below the uh, lower earnings limit. So, um, uh, that, that's, uh, that's quite key. Now, as I mentioned earlier on, the only way you're going to make sure that your returns are not rejected uh, by, is by making sure that all of the employee and payroll information is it's accurately recorded. Um, you do need to make sure that uh, the addresses for employees um, are aligned with HMRC's records as well. Okay, P45s. I did mention earlier on that uh, you'll no need to, uh, you'll you'll no longer need to um, um, uh, notify. HMRC of uh, new employees uh, with P45s or leavers uh, with P45s, but the actual lever themselves will need to still receive a P45. So that 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 is uh, there is one element of that form that that, that will continue uh, into the world of RTI. So just a quick uh, whistle stop tour of the uh, the key information that uh, you will need for. Um, uh, correct returns. You'll need the employee's national insurance number, the title surname, forename, do avoid uh, nicknames, uh, you'll need their initials, the current gender in case they have changed or are planning to change, um, their, their full uh, address and their full UK postcode. Also if, if you have new employees starting in, in, the, uh, in, in the new tax year then uh, unless they've already submitted a P46 manually or a P45 manually or online, then you need to include those on the FPS. The frequency of pay, whether they're weekly, fortnightly or monthly paid, again, that information will need to go on FPS together with all the other standard payroll information such as their gross wage, any overtime, etc. that they may have worked. That's really for the purposes of calculating PAYE national insurance. Okay, well, th there is some big changes, and uh, not everybody is going to get it right, uh, I'm afraid, and uh, unfortunately, it's a numbers game. Uh, the kind of things that uh, employers will uh, be getting wrong is that uh, they'll be submitting uh, the FPSs or the returns late. Um, there'll be circumstances where which, uh, the payment for PAYE national insurance is being made late. Inaccurate submissions is probably the biggest one, but... Uh, what you'll be faced with there is, is returns being rejected. Uh, employers then trying to identify the incorrect data and then trying to um, and then trying to uh, submit the correct data. Uh, reasonable care is is something that we will um, uh, be covering uh, later in the uh, webinar. And there's also some breathing space for the uh, transitional period as we get RTI into, into full swing. So, late filing, well, there's an automatic penalties there. Um, haven't really changed from the previous uh, years. Now, if you were part of the RTI pilot, there shouldn't be any late filing penalties if you're doing an RTI submission for 12.13. But if you are part, if you aren't part of the RTI, then then the automatic penalties will still be in place for this current tax year, which is a non-RTI year for those not in the pilot scheme. There's still a deadline for filing, which is uh, 19th of May. Um, if the return does go in uh, late at the end of the year, then uh, up to 50 employees, it's a it's a hundred pound penalty per month. And last year there was a bit of an issue where some uh, employers weren't notified of the penalties until September, October, November time, by which time uh, they already accumulated you know, five or six hundred pounds worth of penalties. So uh, uh, keep an eye on uh, the filing deadlines. In terms of payment, we're, uh, uh, we're making uh, payments electronically. Again, 
we've got it up until the 22nd uh, of the month following uh, payment to make uh, payments of uh, uh, PAYE national insurance uh, and where uh, you're making manual payments then these need to be with HMRC by the 19th of the month following the pay period. Penalties for late uh, payment are based really uh, on um, the number of defaults in each tax year. Now, again, historically, uh, under the old system, HMRC haven't really uh, chased hard uh, for late payment penalties because they've, it's, they've just, it's just been too much of a workload. But now that information is being submitted to them real time, they'll know exactly how much PAYE national insurance is due and they'll then be able to trigger much more automatic penalties for uh, companies that are paying uh, their PAYE national insurance past the payment deadlines and the percentages are here they the uh, maximum penalty is four uh, percent if you're making uh, if you've got more than ten late payments in the tax year first payment is always ignored for the purpose of the penalties okay there are some additional penalties if uh, the payment's still late more than six months uh, and 12 months there's an extra uh, five and five, so the total penalties, depending on uh, how long and how many defaults you've had, you know, you could end up with a 14% penalty uh, of the uh, tax due. If we are making late payments, then you need to ask yourself whether uh, you have a reasonable excuse, and the, the, there's some fairly uh, uh, kind of serious issues uh, surrounding your reasonable excuse uh, which HMRC will accept and, and that, that surrounds death or serious illness of an employer or, or a close family member or an act of God so you know if your offices are being flooded or, or, or HMRC's offices um, get flooded um, God forbid. Uh, the kind of things that don't re represent a, a reasonable excuse are things like well we you know, had far too much work on uh, didn't have enough information. A good one is always uh, HMRC never asked me for the money, so I didn't pay it. Um, or cash flow difficulties. This, this is uh, this is the uh, the one that most employers are faced with. Um, now, if there are kind of unforeseen events, so um, if a big uh, debtor doesn't pay you, for instance, um, or you know, uh, there's some emergency repairs or whatever that need doing on your building. Um, Big one-off events like that may um, represent a, a reasonable excuse, but uh, again, generally, as a rule of thumb, cash flow difficulties is not accepted as a reasonable excuse. If you think that you are going to be late with your payment, then the name of the game is always make contact with HMRC in advance and try and get that penalty position mitigated. Incorrect returns, well, um, th this is going to be quite a, a, a regular one, I suspect, uh, for a lot of people in RTI next year. Now, uh, fortunately, at the moment, there won't be penalties for uh, incorrect submissions in year. So where you are making, uh, where you have made mistakes uh, on an FPS, you are able to correct it on the next report. Um, even after the year end, um, you can, you can uh, submit um, an earlier year update, an EYU, but failing that, if you if you if if, in a, if a, an error is spotted and isn't corrected, or if HMRC spots an error which hasn't been corrected, then penalties will kick in. Penalties generally uh, up to 100% of the PAYE national insurance, and HMRC will look at the potential lost revenue, not the actual lost revenue, but how much could HMRC potentially have lost as a result of uh, any inaccurate uh, returns. Um, name of the game there is to just, if, if you have taken reasonable care um, and you, know, you didn't know that you were making incorrect deductions, um, then that, that's, that's a genuine mistake. It, it, but what HMRC says, if, if you haven't followed their instructions for the operation of payroll, 
then that's not reasonable care. In other words, you should you need to know or what the rules are, and if you don't follow them, then it's you haven't taken reasonable care. Um, now, how anybody could get it wrong if they followed all the HMRC rules? Well, uh, that, that's a, another subject for discussion. But um, basically, uh, HMRC it will more than likely issue a penalty for um, for um, incorrect returns of up to 100% of the penal potential lost revenue. Again, uh, some of the factors that they'll take into account is whether you've taken reasonable care. If you, if you do spot errors uh, and you disclose them voluntarily, then great, uh, you, you'll be on to a 0% penalty. But if, if there's been uh, some element of carelessness, uh, then there's a higher penalty. If it's a deliberate error, which you, you, you don't conceal when HMRC pick it up, then uh, a slightly higher penalty, but um, there'll be a heavier penalty. But if you deliberately make errors to try and keep your PAYE national insurance down, and you try to hide it uh, from HMRC if or when they take a look, then you know, expect to be in the 100% penalty um, area. So um, it's, it's early days with RTI. Uh, at the moment, uh, HMRC are proposing any uh, penalties for late filing of, of FPS says in year for 2012-13, 2013-14. Uh, they will apply for penalties um, after uh, the tax year, which is the year-end um, FPS filing. So uh, that one does need to be correct and on time. Going beyond the 2013-14 tax year, uh, HMRC is still um, considering whether uh, and what the penalty situation is going to look like, and they've got a consultation document out called Securing Compliance with RTI. Um, uh, that was issued in June last year. Um, the uh, My Institute, the Chartered Institute of Taxation, uh, as well as a number of other accountancy bodies have, have submitted their responses. and the. Uh, the final penalty position for the rest of uh, of RTI's life will, will hopefully be confirmed fairly soon. Well, I think that takes us to the end of this uh, uh, webinar on RTI. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll leave the uh, board open for any questions that uh, anybody may well have. Um, yes, uh, someone's asked, will this involve uh, an increase in workload? Yes. Right, okay. Well, actually, that feeds quite nicely into another question we've had, which is, um, do you think it's likely to make people less less keen on becoming employers? Right. Yeah, they've got to make sure that they're, they're collecting more information and accurate information from employees before they start uh, processing the payroll. Because if you've got a new starter and his, all of his information's incorrect or his name's wrong or whatever, um, it, that, that one bad egg Will, will mean that the whole of the payroll submission will get rejected. And is it uh, realistic to expect dentists to use the uh, the cloud-based HMRC website software? Uh, far be it from me to um, to uh, uh, make any disparaging remarks about the HMRC uh, software. We I, I, I've not uh, personally used it or seen it in operation with any of our clients. Um, um, I, 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 my, my recommendation is, is to use a, a properly qualified uh, firm of accountants or a properly uh, kitted out, technically up-to-date, up-to-speed kind of um, payroll bureau. That's great. Well, Bally is always happy to talk to Dental Fusion members and contributes to the Fusion magazine. So if you are a member, then do get in touch with any other financial subjects that you'd like him to cover. So we're asking uh, and trying to encourage people to listen to these webinars and uh, join in Dental Fusion. So we're offering a discount code to anyone who listens to this podcast, either live or in its recorded form on YouTube. If you enter the code 1971 when buying a membership online at www.dentalfusion.org, you will get 10% off either practice or associate membership, and that's valid till 31st of December 2013. Um, DCPs can join the Fusion for a pound. That gives you access to one hour free verifiable CPD for watching the, the webinars. And that about wraps it up. I uh, hope it's been helpful. So for now, thanks for your time and attention.